In a previous video, I had talked about the differences between 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and why you should always use 5 gigahertz when you have the chance because it's got so many advantages to it. But I was completely surprised by so many comments out of nowhere talking about how 5 gigahertz is dangerous, that Wi-Fi is harmful, it's literally deadly, and I was so surprised by this absurdity that I thought I should probably address it. Now, I'm not gonna do this video like just saying, oh, you guys are all idiots, ha ha ha, because I know there's a ton of misinformation out there, and there are actual idiots out there spouting this nonsense and presenting it as fact, so normal people who might not have that much background information about this kind of stuff would think, oh well, sounds like he knows what he's talking about, even though it's totally absurd. So this video is for anyone who has even the slightest, tiniest doubt about the safety of Wi-Fi and whether, I don't know, maybe these long exposures with Wi-Fi in my house could be doing something. This is for you, and I did make a video about this on my old channel a long time ago, so I thought it was good time for an update. Now, the first thing I need to say is that there were a lot of people mixing up 5G and 5 gigahertz. In my last video, I did not talk about 5G at all. It was exclusively about Wi-Fi, 5 gigahertz. 5G is means fifth generation, and it refers to cellular technologies for your phone. It's the fifth generation of wireless signal technologies for the cellular. And 5 gigahertz is simply a spectrum of frequencies used by routers and other things like radar, and that simply refers to the spectrum from 5,000 megahertz up to 5,999 megahertz. That has nothing to do with 5G. It is a completely different thing. And it's funny because the 5G technology does not even use the 5 gigahertz spectrum. So those of you who are talking about 5G before, look, you weren't even understanding what I was saying. So if you're gonna be trying to make these points, you should at least be talking about the correct thing. Now, 5G also is not dangerous. I'll kind of touch on that later. We're focusing on Wi-Fi mostly. So when it comes to Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz, a common thing you hear with these kinds of worrying claims is that, well, it's got gigahertz and it's gigahertz microwave radiation. You know, these are very harsh words. You know, it's like a billion times a second. This radiation is fluctuating right into your body. It's hurting you. You know, without any context, that might sound plausible. Like, yeah, wow, these are dangerous sounding words, you know, sounds pretty serious. But in this video, what we are going to do is add context and realize you can make a lot of things sound pretty scary and serious, even though it's not at all. The first thing I should clear up though, and I'm sure most of you already know this, hopefully, but all light is radiation. Radio waves is light. Visible light is light. Gamma rays, ultraviolet, x-rays, it's all light, it's all radiation, it's all the same stuff. So don't let the term radiation scare you. But anyway, let's get into some of these concerns. So you hear the term gigahertz and it sounds, you know, like pretty high energy stuff, right? Well, maybe until I ask you, well, why aren't you concerned about regular light, which is on the order of hundreds of terahertz, literally, thousands of times more energetic than any radio waves. A regular light bulb is putting out thousands of times more energy than a Wi-Fi antenna, and you're never concerned about that. Of course, frequency is not the entire story, and you should definitely remember this. This is gonna be an important part in the rest of the explanations, because there's also wattage, and you can kind of think of this as how much light at a certain frequency there is coming off of something, whether it's a light bulb, an antenna, or just passing through the room, whatever. So take an average light bulb, which has a power, that's the scientific term, power of 40 watts. That's regular incandescent 40 watt light bulb, very average. And that is putting off literally 40 watts of hundreds of terahertz radiation, if you wanna think of it that way. So you're not worried about the light bulb, hopefully not, so therefore, you should not be worried about the Wi-Fi antenna. So you got this 40 watt light bulb, hundreds of terahertz, as opposed to 0.1 watts of gigahertz. The light bulb is putting out way more energy and radiation. Now, another thing you might say or might be thinking is, well, what about microwave ovens? I mean, they use the same 2.4 gigahertz 
as my router does and they can cook food. That can't be good for you. And sure, if you don't know much about all the other stuff I was talking about and am going to talk about, that might sound concerning. But again, remember the wattage is so important here. Now, one quick refresher if you're not familiar with how microwaves work, some context, water, H2O, vibrates very well in resonance with 2.4 gigahertz microwave radiation. If you shine enough microwave radiation at water, it will vibrate very well compared to other frequencies. And that's why we use microwaves because it heats up food by vibrating the water in there. But microwave ovens are so many, many, many times more powerful than anything used for Wi-Fi or any router. You can look at the label on your microwave oven probably and it will say something around a thousand watts. So we have light bulbs at 40 watts a router at 0.1 watts around there, and then you have the microwave oven of a thousand hertz. Yeah, no wonder it's able to cook food. Now, one other conspiracy I see related to this kind of, now this is really kooky stuff, is that the government is pushing Wi-Fi and stuff because they're using it in millimeter wave weapons, which is another way of saying microwaves because when you convert the frequency to the wavelength it's about a millimeter but to that I respond yeah no duh you can weaponize almost any type of light if you shove enough watts into it and this is especially so if you focus that light onto one spot which is what these weapons do you can look up millimeter weapons they do exist but you can weaponize a giant ass light bulb if you wanted to. You can make a hundred kilowatt light bulb and put a reflector dish behind it and shine it at you standing in front of it and yeah, you're gonna get cooked, no microwave required. So what if by now you're thinking, well, you know what, I'm still not convinced and I just don't like the idea of all this microwave radiation going around, so I'm not even gonna get a router, gonna use all wired stuff and just not deal with microwaves at all. Well. Sorry to break it to you, but that's impossible. Have you ever heard of the term cosmic microwave background radiation? It's microwave radiation that is left over from the Big Bang. And it's literally everywhere and has always been there and always will. This microwave radiation, it's low level, again, so it's not harmful. We talked about wattage, it's almost negligible, but the microwave radiation is there and has been forever. There are not many things you can say that have been around forever. And microwave background radiation is one of those things. So if you're worried about long exposure to microwaves, well, sorry to break it to you, but you've already been exposed to microwave radiation literally every second of every day of your entire life. And so has every other human and every other living thing that has ever existed and we seem to have gotten fine until now. You can't escape it from going to the moon, you can't escape it from going to another planet, you can't even escape it by going to another galaxy. It's everywhere. Hell, even our own bodies reflect and emit radiation in the form mostly of infrared, and so does every other object because every object has a temperature, unless it's at absolute zero, which is physically impossible. Literally everything produces radiation in some form. Don't let that term scare you. What is way more important than the frequency is the amount of radiation coming off. If there's a negligible amount, it doesn't matter even if it's gamma rays. If it's one gamma ray, you probably won't have any effect on you at all. But wait a minute, speaking of gamma radiation, why is gamma rays and ultraviolet rays and x-rays, why are these considered dangerous while like visible light and radio waves aren't? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about next because if you had any doubts, if you're still not convinced, there is yet another reason why you should not worry about Wi-Fi or any of other type of less powerful radio waves or anything like that. And that is because Wi-Fi, just like visible light and infrared light and even radio waves are all so-called non-ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation starts in the UV spectrum and goes up in more energy levels, shorter wavelengths, so UV, X-rays, and gamma radiation, and non-ionizing radiation is visible light down. And what is ionizing radiation? Obviously the question, and that is that ionizing radiation is light that has a high enough energy level in terms of frequency so that it can actually knock an electron, a bound electron, off of an atom turning it into an ion by changing its charge. When you remove an electron, 
that charge is going to be different and that's why it's called ionizing radiation. And non-ionizing radiation, which is visible light down, cannot do that. It's not energetic enough, no matter how much wattage, no matter how powerful an antenna you have. And this is why we worry about UV rays getting sunburn, because UV rays have enough to actually mess up the atoms in your skin and cause a lot of sunburn and mess up the electrons on atoms in your DNA and potentially cause skin cancer, all sorts of stuff, whereas visible light cannot, and nor can microwaves, nor can infrared or radio waves. So non-ionizing radiation cannot affect your body in any real way. It doesn't affect the makeup of your atoms at all. The only thing it can do is heat things up, which is pretty obvious if you ever hold your hand next to a light bulb. Typically that infrared radiation specifically is gonna be warming up your hand. And what's happening here is the photons from that light source are shining onto your hand and jiggling the atoms in your skin, warming them up a bit, raising the temperature, which temperature is literally just how much something is vibrating. And when it gets absorbed, it makes it vibrate more. So yes, with enough power, any kind of light bulb would be able to hurt someone, but it would just be from the heat and only the heat. And going back to microwave ovens, you know, they use enough radiation in terms of microwave radiation to heat up food. And we use that specific frequency just because water happens to absorb more of that frequency than others. So it's more convenient, but you still need a ton of it and you need to focus it all on the food in one place for it to even work. The thing to remember is if you are being harmed by heat or any radiation causing heat on you, you will feel it. You can't just invisibly be hurt by non-ionizing radiation. You will know it. And that's unlike ionizing radiation like x-rays or gamma rays. You can have a ton of gamma rays and going through you and you won't even feel it, but you're gonna get radiation sickness. And that's why we need things like Geiger counters and radiation detectors. On the other hand, if microwaves or radio waves or anything else were hurting you, you would know it. And remember that the lower the frequency, the more energy you're gonna need to put into something to heat it up. So already we have visible light where you need a ton of it to heat someone up to the point of hurting them. And then you have a lower frequency, lower energy Wi-Fi that is harder to heat things up and you would also need a ton more power to do it. So it just doesn't make sense to be worried about a Wi-Fi antenna. Now, remember back when we were talking about 5G, I kind of mentioned it with cellular technologies, not five gigahertz, 5G, fifth generation. Well, here's a fun fact. Cell phones use a lot lower frequency even than Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi uses about 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz. Cell phones use the band about 600 megahertz or 800 megahertz, about a third of what you would get with Wi-Fi or even less. And that is because lower frequencies can travel further and travel through more things without interacting with them. And that's why you can get a cell reception from a cell tower miles away when sometimes you can barely get a Wi-Fi signal from across your own house. So 5G cellular is not anything to worry about. It's still gonna be using extremely low frequencies because it has to to travel any real distance. And one thing that a lot of people are getting confused about, there's two different forms of 5G. There's two parts to it. One is the cellular, which is gonna be using, again, like probably 600 megahertz. The other one is fixed wireless, which is gonna be very short range, and that's gonna be about 60 gigahertz. Again, nothing close to visible light, and that's gonna be basically field of view signal. So it'll be like if you're in a restaurant or something, you can have your cell phone out and if it's within view of the transmitter, you're gonna get very, very fast speeds. And 60 gigahertz can't even pass through as many things. It's a higher frequency relatively, so it can't pass through walls. It can barely pass through your skin. It can't pass through you. It's all line of sight. And not that even if it is in visible sight of you that it is dangerous. Remember, it's still nowhere close to visible light. It's just negligible. And even if you're still worried about cell phones and 600 megahertz frequency radio waves and putting that next to your head to make a phone call, again, going back to the visible light thing, you're worried about that. But again, why would you then not be worried about looking at the phone screen, which is putting out a higher wattage, higher amount of visible light, which is thousands of times or more energetic, and that's shining right into your face. So I think I've talked about it enough, guys. Radio waves, Wi-Fi is not harmful at all. It's completely harmless. Hopefully, with the way I explain it in this video, that should be pretty obvious. 
And if you were worrying before, you shouldn't anymore. And look, I know there's still gonna be people out there who are still gonna come up with some absurd explanation how it's dangerous. You know what, this is not a debate. I'm not gonna talk about this, this anymore. I'm not gonna be responding to comments. If you don't believe me, go on using wired internet for everything, be my guest. But don't go spouting all this nonsense that is completely untrue. But anyway, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you enjoyed it and you thought, oh, wow, that really helped out, let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. And if you wanna subscribe, I make a couple new videos every week. So thanks again so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.